Okay. So generally use the quite effective is the 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 grip, the bass bug hooks. Reason why is it's got quite a wide gap at the back. They usually use the bass bugs for your bigger bass flies, your poppers, all of that, because it's got the longer shank and then it's got quite a wide gap at the back. Okay, with the um, belly scratcher, you need quite a wide gap because you're going to be putting zonka, you're going to be putting crystal chenille, you're going to be putting the beads, you're going to be doing all of that type of stuff. So you don't want any of your materials to block the actual point of the hook. You want that to be open at all times and that. Okay, so straightforward. Okay, so just run a clear base of line all the way down to the back. Okay, so you can stop at that point over there on the hook. Um, with this being a different bend and that you don't have that perfect round bend so try and get it to where the barb of the hook is and stop at that point okay then as far as the copper wire goes you don't necessarily need to use copper wire a lot of guys use copper wire because it's a more hardy material um, it's more it's got a bit of a flex to it and that uh, a lot of guys, I mean, I've tied it, I've used braid, I've used mono, I've used all different materials to use it. But the copper just, just, just makes a little bit more sense than that. So you just cut a small piece. Okay, now with the copper wire, allow the copper wire all the way up to the R. Because um, what's going to happen is you're basically going to be threading beads onto here. And then you're going to be pulling that hard and tight all the way to the front. Now, if you go and do that and you haven't tied this section in tight enough, what's going to happen is you're going to pull that and you're going to pull the whole wire out and you have to restart the entire fly again. So just always remember to tie this first section in as tight as possible. Why do you need wire instead of mono? Uh, mono? Mono does tend to... Uh, it, it, I know they say it's like high abrasion and all of that. Because what happens with the fly, the fly is basically swimming like that. So if you do by chance want to like bounce it off the bottom and get it off rocks and do all different stuff, what happens is, is that section over there is constantly hitting on the bottom. That's what the whole concept behind it is. Like I said, I've, I've, I've fished a couple of times off the bottom. You can use mono. I've, I've had more takes on this in mid water or bobbing it up and down, not actually bouncing it off the bottom. But apparently, the, basically, the copper wire is more hardy. With the mono, can tend to get damaged and stuff much quicker. So I think it's just about the durability of the fly as well. Um, okay. So once you get to that point, just, just test it. Pull it a couple of times like this just to feel that it is tight in there. Okay, push that out the way. Then just basically just take straightforward piece of crystal chenille. Um, preferably try and use the largest crystal chenille as possible because what's happening is you're actually trying to create the belly of the fish. Um, it gives it a whole attractant side to it. Plus, if you look at a, a belly of some fish in that, I mean, it's like quite translucent in that. Uh, I've tied it, I've split thread rabbits, I've done all different types of stuff, but the crystal chenille just seems to, seems to look the best and work the best in that. And you just run your thread forward and you stop at about that point over there. Okay, it's important to stop there. I'll, I'll explain as I go through the whole process and that. I'll explain why there must be such quite a big gap in the front here. Then basically just take your chenille. As, as you're rolling forward, wrapping it forward in that, just keep on brushing the fibers back.
Okay. Okay, then you stop at about that point over there. I don't know if you can see it. So you stop about there. Um, I'll get to that part now. And then just tie this off. Okay, so there you got exactly, looks exactly like a trout fritz, exact same method to go forward onto that. Then basically just take your beads. Um, preferably for this flight, you don't have to go and use expensive brass beads. Um, I, th I think it's quite a waste because, I mean, you can go between three to five beads. And three to five tungsten beads or brass beads is quite expensive. So it's going to work out to quite an expensive fly. Go anywhere, go to China Mall, wherever. They actually sell metal beads, quite weighty metal beads. Very cheap. I mean, used for jewelry and stuff. Basically, I don't know if you can see it. It's just a straightforward little jewelry bead. Um, very cheap. You can buy like a thousand for 25 Rand. And they've got quite a bit of weight to them. So, basically, then you, what you're going to do is you're going to thread on. Um, you can create you can create it to rattle, rattle. what you can do is duck generally I, I pull it quite tight over and tie it quite tight but I mean you can tie it loose this 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 is basically just to turn the fly that's all about it I've never actually yeah I never thought of that so you could you could possibly do that yeah so for the purpose of that one I'll tie this one loose just to see so there you've got your beads at the bottom here. Yeah? Just bend your wire forward and then just tie that off. But you know you can actually you can buy rattles that they're expensive. Yeah they are. Okay. No, I love these, sir. Eh? I love these things, though. Eh? Okay, so basically, if you if you can see on the top over here, uh, needle. Okay, so you run your chenille, then you run your copper. You put your copper on, and then you put your beads. There's your beads all lying flat onto here. I've left it loose for rattle to see. Yeah, I've never never thought of it. I, I pull this thing as tight as I possibly can. It's also to, just to try and squash the chenille in a bit. But I mean, that's the whole area there. So, I mean, for the case of this fly, I've tied on four. Um, you go smaller hooks than that. Try and lay your beads to the size of to what you've tied the chenille in. So there I've basically, yeah, I've gone for four, four beads. Okay, which are loose. Okay, perfect. And you basically just run your thread back up and then tie it up against that copper, uh, the copper wire as tight as possible. So now you've got this area over here. The reason why I try and keep, give yourself enough room for this over here because you're going to be tying quite a lot in the front here now. Firstly, you're going to be, we're going to be doing the step of tying the zonka in this side, which is going to be tied over there. Then you're going to be tying in white bait fish and then the other color bait fish. So you've got to give yourself enough room here. If you're not sure and you think, oh, I'm not going to have enough room, that's fine. Take it even more further back. Because there's a way to manipulate bait fish. I'll show you now how to actually manipulate bait fish dubbing in that. It's very, very easy. And you'll still get the exact same tight at the end of the day. Okay, so for the sake of this, we've basically given it that amount of space. Okay, now the fun part. Your... Zonka strip. Which one should I use? Yeah, I'll do this one. Okay, so Zonka strip. Zonka strip basically, like I said, you can tie this fly any color. Tie it the black, you can go crazy. Um, I also like to tie the, tie, tie the belly scratches in white. And like I said, because you can sharpie it in, you can color it, you can create any, any bait fish you want. Um, but white, for some reason, a white Zonka. 
on a on a on a on a fly is, is is a massive trigger. There's something about white that fish just go mad for. Um, trout. I mean, a tie simple marabou fly, white fly for trout. It's 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 such an ugly fly, but it you know what it does the business every single time. So basically, just take your strip of zonka. How you're going to measure your zonka is basically you've got to tie your zonka in at that point over there. So you basically got to tie it in. Can you see that? Okay. So you basically got to tie it on that where you've actually created a bit of a uh, a bit of a hump. That's where your zonka is going to be tied in. Okay. So now you've got to now work out this tail section over here. This whole tail section over here is basically going to be a length to a length and a half longer than your actual hook itself. So very very straightforward. Take your zonka. Put your zonka at that point and then just pinch it at the back here, take your zonka and cut it off. Okay, it's a very, very easy way to do it. Oh, what size should I do? This size. Okay. Now the trick part. This took me about, let's say about 30 times to do before I got it right. It's, it's, it's a nightmare. I went through a lot of zonka. So you basically hold it at that point over here. You got that in there. Now you've got to look at the bend of your hook. Because now what's going to happen is you're going to be threading this, the, the actual zonka, onto the hook itself and pulling it down, to, uh, the, the actual uh, bend of the hook. So if you take it at that point there, you measure yeah, you pinch it, and now you've got to keep it pinched. You've got to keep your mark all the time. And you just poke it through there like that. Okay? Take your whole thing like this, just pinch it through. As you can see, can they see that? Huh? Okay, you just pinch it through and you push it down. So you basically, you got that. Then you take your zonka, push your zonka down. Still keep the fly like this. And now you can see the zonka is exactly in that position where it needs to be. Okay, so it gives you quite a bit of a head still to tie here and to tie that in. But that's that's basically the concept. That's why you'll you'll never ever get your zonka. That's what makes this fly good. You'll never ever get any materials wrapping around the hook, poking on the point, anything like that. So every single cast you're going to do, you're going to get that fly going through the water exactly the same. You never have to worry about anything twisting or anything like that. Okay, so once you've got it at that point, just pinch with your nail, push your zonka slightly forward so that this, the zonka pulls tight up against the, uh, the chenille. And then basically just tie that in. And then just create a bit of a head, push it a little bit up like that, and you basically got that. Okay, so now you've basically created your belly with the beads that's going to turn your hook upside down and you've created your first section of your back and your tail. Okay, now turn the fly back up the way it was. Then, yeah, basically just take your bait fish. You, the thing with creating this head is you can either create it with a, with a, with a big fat head like if you're doing like a tilapia, like a tilapia has got quite a oval, like round body in that. Where you've got, for example, like your barbs and all the other uh, bait fish species and stuff are quite slender. So if you want to create like a tilapia or um, some other bulkier fish and stuff like that, you can use quite a bit of dubbing on the head. Yeah, bluegills, anything you want. Um, you can use quite a bit, but for, I, I, I personally, less is more. That's, that's just how I feel about bait fish and stuff like that. Less is more on it. Um, so you basically just take a little bit of dubbing like that. Basically just tease it out a little bit. Okay, now it's the measuring of how, where the bait fish... 
if I put it like that, that's way too long. That's really touching the tail and stuff like that. The thing about a belly scratcher is this needs to be a bit exposed. That's the whole effect of the chenille and that. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's like a little trigger. So you basically just take it like that, measure, and then just pinch off. And then go to this side. And then you pinch off. So you basically got that. Just take that teaser through again. Okay, now you're going to start creating the actual head. So you move it forward and stop at that point. Still leave a little bit of space in the front. Just so if you're going, so you've moved it from there to there. Leave a little bit of space, it's like on any fly, basically to create some like a bit of a head in that. Okay, measure out to about that point there. How's my time? Yeah. yeah time's all good. Okay. Key to this: don't tie this in too many times, because what's going to happen is if with the bait fish and stuff like that, and a lot of guys make that mistake. They'll try to tie a bait fish, but they they, they keep on putting lots of wraps and lots of wraps and lots of wraps and then they try to brush it back. The problem is, is that they've wrapped that side too far forward and they've wrapped and it's sitting like that now. Now they're trying to brush that forward. It's not going to brush anymore because you've, you've tied down so much cotton in between there that it's not actually going to blend into each other. So you just give it three, you basically go once over soft and then you give it two tighter ones. That's it. And try to keep the, the, the thread on top of each other as much as possible. And you basically just turn it over. Okay, so you see the white, we've only put a little bit of white in. Now with the back, what you're going to do is you're going to try and get this, the, the, the bait fish, the dubbing, to blend into the actual um, zonker itself now. So yeah, you can take quite a, quite a hefty amount in that. And exact same story, so... Basically, just tease it out. Now, yeah, you can go a little bit further back onto the actual, onto the zonker itself. Try, you can even try and get it in in between the hook, or alternatively, you can stop just before the hook. Once again, stopping any material from wrapping into the hook or anything like that. So then, straight forward, just pinch off. And then just keep pinching off with the top. Okay. And then try not when you when you when you're tying it down. Why I say the first one loose like that is it's it's like yeah. If you start pulling immediately too tight from the first one, it's going to just start spinning immediately in that. So the idea is basically just to lock it into that position because the green mustn't blend in with the white. It's got to create that whole boat fish with the white belly, the colored back, and that. So now that's loose. Second one is tight. And then it holds it in immediately. Three turns, that's it. Okay. Take the top. The top you just fan out like that. So it just basically widens it out in that. That you push back. This you split. Because you're basically going to have to bring your cotton forward now. And then you just tie that in. Okay. So now, when I was explaining to you with too much cotton, tying down too much cotton, your fly is going to stay like that. You're never going to get that brush back. Firstly, because number one, it's short. Um, yeah, so just try and keep like three wraps when you're tying it down. And I'd like to just create quite a big head in that because you're going to be doing putting the eyes on this section, and then I'll explain to you why. Okay. Yeah.
so that's the okay so that's the flat side now and then what you do is just take a take any little brush and then you start brushing everything just to blend it all in Okay, so basically that's that's the fly. Now the fun starts. Um, okay, stick in the eyes. I, I don't know. Everybody's got their own personal opinion about eyes. Eyes must match. If you're looking at a bait fish, bait fish have got small little eyes. I work on the same concept of saltwater. Saltwater. You look at sprats. You look at saltwater bait fish. They've got very big eyes. And if you look at them in the water, they're quite translucent in that. So the trigger of the whole thing is the actual eyes itself. So I've, I've, I've based it on the exact same concept for, for fresh water and that. And, you know, it's worked. Um, guys like to try and imitate a bait fish exactly the same. But, I don't know, I've seen, seen two totally different flies catch the same amount of fish. One looked realistic and the other one didn't. So... I think it's just just certain triggers on a fly that's important. Okay, so got various. I mean, you got various flies. Uh, like I said, I like to use a bigger a bigger eye on this. I'm going to go with a very dark pupil eye. Okay, like like to just use uh, brush on super glue. Brush on super glue is just basically to hold it in 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 place in that. Um, putting on bait fish eyes must be the most frustrating thing. It's it, it never ever works. So it's basically just turn the fly on the side. It's hoping you know, show us the secret today, Rob. Um, yeah, the secret's not to get my sting fingers stuck. Eh? It's uh, okay. So you basically just get your super glue, put a little bit on. Uh, generally, the 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 super glue gel works the best, but I mean the brush the brush glue uh, works perfect for me. Uh. And then you just pinch and hold. Uh -huh. Okay. So you basically got that. Um, you'll notice that I I haven't put it all the way onto the actual onto the actual dubbing itself. I haven't stuck it or put the dubbing right up to the hook there. Um, the reason why is a lot of guys tie the bait fish dubbing right up to the um, eye of the hook. Then what happens is they stick the eye directly onto the dubbing. Number one, it's either going to lose lose its whole look because now you're pushing the eyes deep into the into the um, into the dubbing. And when the fly gets wet, all that material comes out. And then you've got these eyes squashed in against uh, on, on, on the actual um, shank of the hook in that. And it, it, it actually doesn't look nice. So what I've done is basically tied it a little bit short with the baitfish dubbing and allowed where I've tied a bit of a head so that the eye goes up to the um, eye of the hook and a little bit on the dubbing. So you basically now what's going to happen is you're going to create a gap in between the eyes. And that's where UV bond, lovely UV bond comes into play, um, which you're basically going to fill that entire space and hold those eyes together. So as you're drying, you're pushing the eyes together and then you dry. A lot of guys just put UV bond and dry it and stuff like that. Those eyes are going to fall off. You've you literally got to squash those eyes together while you're drying it. Um, okay, so super glue is just basically to hold it into place. There we go. Okay, so now you've got both eyes perfectly placed in line. And you can just brush all of this back. 
Okay. Then when gluing the eyes in and that, um, use the thinner, it's a, it's a, it's a thinner liquid because what's happening is you, you want to try and get those eyes to stay on tight now. So if you go and use thick and hard, it's basically just going to sit on top of the fibers, it's going to just catch the eyes and it's not going to actually work. So you need to use the thinner UV bonds, you squirt it in, you let it soak right into the fibers, um, dry it, put another layer, dry it and then start working with your thicker, harder um, bond. Okay, so where you got, so what I've gone and done now, is hopefully not a mess up. Um, basically, you can see where the eyes, the eyes go onto the actual bait fish. Just run your, your, your bond a little bit onto the eyes over there to grab into those fibers. Nice fibers eh? Hey. Nice fibers eh? Yeah. Look at that. Okay, flip over. When you're gluing it, try to pull the fibers a little bit back. Okay, just for the purpose, I'm not going to do a second layer because those eyes feel pretty solid. And you take your thicker um, with the heads and stuff like that. Also, don't use don't use the uh, softer UV bond. So if it's if it says thick and soft, don't use it because it's basically that it's it's going to get damaged when you're putting through water and you bang into something like that. That that uh, UV bond actually damages. So always try and stick to your harder ones. Okay. So now also as you're doing that and building the head, bring it onto the eye a bit like that. Just to cover that eye. Okay. And that's it. Okay. Now, if you get your different kinds of uh, bait fish patterns out there, like your fresh waters and stuff like that, your general would be either your barbs, uh, your basically your juvenile tilapia, juvenile bass, all of that. They all more or less got the same like olive concept to them. Uh, with the white bellies, um, so basically now the type, the top the top of uh, pattern that worked the best. I mean, I'm sure the guys that fish for bass and that is always your like your fire tiger patterns where it's got all the stripes down the side and all of that. But I mean, with sharpies and these type of fish, you can create anything. So easiest, quickest way to do it, most effective. What I found on this is basically just start with your orange. I don't like to use specifically red itself. Um, I don't know. It's just I, I think red's red's a bit of an overkill on it. But you just basically just take an orange. 
and you can run it up the back of the eye as well. So you basically create the gill and the under section. And then just take your yellow. Okay. okay, now the trick with marking the backs and stuff like that is you pull your fibers down tight, take your marker, and then just make a soft line on the back like that to start. How you want it to go down, you can actually take this out, put the zonker strip up. your zonka up, grab all your zonka together and then just make a single mark on the top how far you want to go down okay now take your mark here see what the sharpie's got the triangular point so you basically just take it like that now you work on that marking that you did already I'm just going to do it this side Okay, other side. Uh, and then just take like a chartreuse, chartreuse green or a dark green and Just do a very light like that. And that's it. Done. Very good.